Hey, this is LOA Today, the Law of Attraction Show. Welcome to LOA Today, Walt Thiessen and Joel Elston here on this Thursday, Christmas Eve. Hey, Christmas Eve, 2015, December 24th. And uh, we hope that you're going to have a Merry Christmas. We hope you're having one already, actually, for those who are uh, doing last-minute gift wrapping. This can be an especially joyful time of year. <laughs> you're like, oh, my God, where did I put it? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But it's still a wonderful time of year. And, uh, and the, one of the best parts about Christmas, I think, is that it has, it has kind of moved perhaps to the, the, the disdain of more evangelical Christians, it has kind of moved outside of Christianity. It is now more than just Christianity. Um, it it, it uh, basically envelops and, and uh, uh, includes a wider range of, uh, of persons, and I think that's a good thing. There, there are some who might disagree with me, but I like Christmas because of that, so that's my opinion. Anyway, Joel, how are you doing? Things are great on my end. I've had an ex- uh, a great week. It's hard to believe that it's Christmas Eve and the year is almost over. This Isn't has been it? an incredibly fast year. Oh, it's unbelievable. And it seems like every year it's accelerating. Well, and, and time is, uh, uh, you know, it, it, when you're a child and you're waiting the five days before Christmas, <laughs> it seems like it, 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 if I had to compare, it seems like this entire year was what I – experienced as a child the last five days before Christmas. <laughs> and, and, and so I, I remember when my, my grandfather would tell me, oh, as you get older, time goes faster. It's, uh, it, 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 it really does, and especially with uh, all we have today as far as our social media, the news, all that. I, I think that adds to the feeling of just the pace is unbelievable. But it also uh, creates the challenge for us because one of the things that the Law of Attraction teaching, teachings teach us is that we want to be in the moment. We want to stay in the moment. And staying in the moment actually should slow the time down. So that becomes our challenge. How well can we stay in the moment? And that, that kind of dovetails nicely with what our topic is for today because our topic is what I call waiting for Godot, which is another way of saying waiting for that law of attraction to kick in and deliver the thing you're looking forward to deliver to you. <laughs> and that can seem to take forever. <laughs> well, it, it, it is a continuation, I think, that we as we have talked in the past, how you, you, you bring about, you're waiting for these things that you're, you're, you're concentrating on, you're feeling, you're on every level, but yet it takes for what seems forever for these events to fill in the blanks. And that's, that's why our topic, I think, is so important today, because it matches you know, what we see, what we perceive with time, and, live, and how living in the moment, at the same time anticipating what's coming versus dreading what has happened, and it all goes together to make sort, sort of a, uh, while we're waiting for this to come together, it's very important uh, to understand this is, this is going to happen, but we have to be in tune with these things to happen, and that's what I think is the big point today. I, I just realized that perhaps I shouldn't call this waiting for, for Godot, perhaps I should call this waiting for Christmas Day. Because that's essentially what we're looking for. We're waiting for that Christmas gift to show up, you know, and say, hey, oh, my God, it's here. That, that does make sense. It makes complete sense. And in, in, in fact, we can maybe even amend our topic because waiting for Christmas Day is, is the perfect analogy as we're going through as a child. We know Christmas is coming. However, it seems to take forever to get here. Yes. <laughs> and, and, it, and even when we're trying to manifest something within the law of attraction, if you really believe it's there, it's going to be here. But as we wait every day, it's what our expectations are that I think really sort of clouds the judgment. When we manifest something, being able I, – I have actually wanted stuff to happen, and it happened, but it did not happen in the way that I wanted it to happen. It took me a while to realize, oh, it actually happened pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that it happened that way. Right. Yeah, in fact, often we'll forget that we even ask for something. Uh, have you noticed that? I'll, I'll, I'll ask for something just because at, at the particular moment in time, it, you know, I was annoyed that I didn't have whatever it was and I needed to, to get it really soon, and then it shows up, and by then my concentration's on something else, and I didn't even notice that it showed up. <laughs> well, and, and, 
that that makes that makes complete sense. And you you have you, within the law of attraction, we have those expectations, and when we want to achieve them, you you're, you're expecting them. Our, of course, our desire is instantly. But it has to happen within a believable time frame. The law of attraction takes place within our believable time frames. You, you have to see it happen. If I, if I want to make a million dollars this year, the law of attraction, again, has no time, but it has to happen in a way that I believe it can happen. And that is where it, it, it isn't just going to magically appear at my door. It's going to happen in in what my in matching what my core beliefs are like I you know in my job am I want to increase my income am I going to do these things if I really believe these things are doable then certainly it's going to be fulfilled it's going to happen without I'm going to go to the store today and I'm going to go buy stuff I have no doubt that's going to happen I have no doubt that's going to be fulfilled so that 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 is already taking place today the law of attraction works a similar way but until you have the ability to treat it the same way as it's already happened or you're really vibrating there it, it, with that, that feeling, then, then it puts it off. It takes, it takes us a while to see that it happens, or to, and it does take some time for us to actually accept this is going to happen because it, often what we're seeking is so far from what we really believe can happen, and that's where the big gap in, in time lies, for me at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think there's also something else you you kind of hinted at there, but you didn't really say directly, which is that all of our beliefs, all of our all, all the things that that we believe can actually happen, uh, you know, how realistic that something can, can happen. Those beliefs are our levels of resistance. Yes, and we don't really think of it those those beliefs that way, but that's what they really are. And in fact, when that concept was first presented to me, I said, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. What on earth are you talking about? <laughs> well, it, it, and that—that's such a that that becomes so clear that that my mindset has always been when I really knew it was going to happen, when I could really get to that tangible where I would feel it would happen, I would be able to. It, it becomes easy. Right. It is when I would have the when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? Well, that itself is a resistance. It, it is. It. it, it, it it feeds into it, and the more you crave it, the the difference between craving it and manifesting it. Sometimes the craving it, or or really focusing on it, over focusing on it, is almost a reverse belief, and that that's where people get stuck, I believe, because when you overdo it, that you're you're almost saying this is so impossible. I I just I I, I can't imagine it happening. Whereas you just say this is going to happen. This is it. This is where I'm at. That's when stuff starts to take place. Yeah, it's actually fear that it's not going to happen, and the fear is the level of resistance. Yes, many many years ago, when I I was going, I was living in South Carolina, and I was really starting to understand the law of attraction and how it was working. And I, I'm going to work in addiction treatment, and I was envisioning this treatment center that I wanted, and this treatment center. And I even did a vision board. I, I, I wow, you did a vision board on a treatment center. That's really cool. Yeah, yes, and I, I, I had a picture of a, a, a house on, on a big piece of land, and I wanted to implement a lot of holistic, sort of holistic treatment principles with, you know, I'm a 12-step. I'm, I'm not a 12-step opponent, but I'm also, I want to look at all options for addiction treatment, not just get stuck on the 12 steps. So I wanted a multifaceted, multiple approach to addiction treatment, sort of a shotgun approach where I could throw everything known at addiction in, in the addiction treatment world at my clients. Now, that's a that's a pretty big thing to do, and I, I did not know how I would come up with the money to do it, but I had I clearly had this vision of what I wanted to happen. Well, on a separate note taking place, I was contacted by a man that lived in Virginia who was opening up in the treatment center, that was exactly like was on my vision board. Wow. Well, I did manifest that treatment center. I didn't necessarily manifest it for me, uh, even though I was working there and I was in charge of the treatment center for several years. I see now how the law of attraction fulfilled that void. It, 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 it put it there. I had it happen. It just wasn't, and, and it wasn't really until I was working there understanding, well, I did bring this about. 
it wasn't the way I thought it was going to be brought about. And it, sometimes it takes us a while to see it. Mm-hmm. That I'm working in this literally, it, it was a different building, but it was a, an old plantation on 400 acres in the middle of beautiful Hanover, Virginia, on rolling hills. And it's, it's like, wow, that, that is almost identical to my vision board. Mm, wow. So I, br- I brought it about, but it wasn't until I was in the middle of it that I could see that I brought it about. Now, I didn't own the treatment center. It wasn't Joel Elston's treatment center, but I was the director of that treatment center. And, and I could see, I, I saw how I envisioned that, how it turned around, how it happened. But it, it wasn't until I was in the middle of it that that happened relatively quickly. And, and I can think of two key points that go along with it, sort of tangentially in a sense. One is that your original thought, your original um, wish, if you will, did not actually specify that you had to own it. You just wanted right. to attract it. Right. Which was probably a good thing because it made it easier to attract it. Well, it, 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 it became a much more believable thing that instead of the multiple millions of dollars falling in my lap that would allow me to to have this happen someone who had a very deep pockets had the same vision and it contacted me to run the facility mm-hmm. so it, it and i didn't envision and, and at the end of the day <laughs> i wanted a facility that would treat my addicts with all of these different modalities and that's exactly what happened I didn't have to own it for that to happen. Right. And and with it, and the advantage of it, with me not owning it, I also didn't have to worry about the ebbs and flow in client, in in, in the client census. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about the financial problems. You know, when the the, uh, air condition blew up, I didn't have to run and get financing to get that fixed. So I was actually director of the program and had none of the financial responsibilities. He got paid a very good salary to do that. So right. I really, I actually manifested it in a way that I didn't even realize was to my best benefit. <laughs> and what's really cool is the second tangential part of it that you really didn't talk about, but which was kind of inferred in what you were saying, which is that once you realized, first of all, that you had attracted it, and then after time realized that you needed it to be more something that was under your control, well, it wasn't like you were done. It's not like you only get one wish from the genie. You can wish again. And you did. Well, I did, exactly. It, it, <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> it, it worked. And, and, and every, the evolution of that, one of the things that I, I evolved from that, and, and I, keep, I, I do keep changing, my vision board changes all the time. I have, uh, you know, I, I really still, I, I do a lot of vision boards. I love them. And I, I change what my vision board is because I'm a changing, evolving creature as well. Mm-hmm. And I have the stuff that I want to, and, and it always comes about. Again, it, it isn't always exactly how I envision it, but it always, always comes about. In fact, in retrospect, I can say, well, that is actually exactly how I envisioned it at that point. That's what I put out there. And I, I've always got frustrated with me, not with the law of attraction, but my inability to not put the negative or what have you, uh, you know, the sort of the resistance out there, because overthinking it, again, becomes the resistance, because it, it's almost like I, 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 once I put it to bed, once I believe it, once it's there, okay, it's there. It's all, it, it has, no, the universe has no choice but to fill that void that I've created, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But it's when I'm like, well, uh, it, it, here, here, here's a way it can happen, or here's this way it can happen. And it, it's like, no, it's not my job to do how the, you know, how the universe is going to take care of it. I, I, I'll let the universe do that. But it's when I try to look at how it's going to come, that's when I start finding myself getting stuck in the, the what ifs, how can, and all that. And that, that seems like it delays the whole process. That's my resistance. It's funny, too, because a lot of people like vision boards, and I'm not one of them, believe it or not. Um, I think it's because my vision isn't all that great. I mean, I, I'm probably legally blind in my left eye. My right eye, I'm okay with glasses, but I don't have great vision by any stretch of the imagination. But my my one sense that is really powerful is my sense of sound, of audio sense, my oral sense, if you will. And... As a result of that, my way of visualizing is more like audioizing. Um, I, I'll use like uh, 
meditation tapes and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play uh, recordings and so forth uh, because that's my way of getting myself into that positive space. It's different from a vision board. I mean, it's not like I can just go right out and get the sound of a new house. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. But, but what I can do is I can put out, like I could even create an, uh, an audio recording that says, wow, I really want to attract a new house. And that, in a sense, becomes my audio board rather than my vision board. So I, I mentioned that just because there may be other people like me who just don't do well with visualizing. I mean, to, to give you an idea of how bad I am at visualizing, most people, I, I, it took me a while to learn this, uh, to realize this, most people can actually hold, uh, they, they can think of something, they can think of an object, they can think of a thing, hold it in memory, hold it in their minds, see it, see the, the shape, see the colors, see all the things about it. I can't do that. I have never been able to do that. The most that I ever get is this very foggy, hard to define, muted, muddy colored thing that kind of fades in and out in my mind. I am never able to hold an image in my mind. But when it comes to holding an audio image, if you will, a sound, I mean, I have, I have learned that I have the ability to hear music in ways that other people don't know how to hear. And I'm not sure if I can explain it, except perhaps to say, if I hear an orchestra playing, I can identify, <clears throat> I can, excuse me, I can identify every single instrument in the orchestra as it's playing. Wow. But most people can't do that. It took I me a long time to realize that these two facts are true. So, well, you know, it, that, it, it's I, a question of knowing what your strengths and weaknesses are and playing to your own strengths. Well, and, and again, a vision board is, a, in my world, is a generic term for just what you're talking about. If I, I, have, it's, it, I have a blind client that has a vision board. And, That's and cool. You're, <laughs> and, and you're thinking, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, th this client has has her sense of hearing is very similar to yours, but it's probably the doctor actually described this in a, in a way it's closer to a, a healthy dog's hearing. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure hers is even more advanced than mine. Is just because right. she has to compensate. Right. She can she can hear incredible nuances in sound mm -hmm. and. And you know, and, and that's one of her. And plus, her sense of smell is just again very tuned. Mm -hmm. So, what she will, what we created for her. And again, when I say she's blind, she does have a little vision. But what what she's able to do is her vision board is a meditation she created where she's describing exactly what she wants in in great detail. And she has certain smells that she has attached to those those statements mm -hmm. that makes any sense sure. very good smells like she she loves you know cakes baking in the house or uh the beach you know how the beach smells the salt water she has all of these smells yeah this time of year it would be something that has ginger and spices and so forth for right. like you know pumpkin bread or, or you know uh, date bread or whatever all that kind of stuff right so she's equated a smell with what her she has her house that she's going to have describe in probably a 45 minute description in exacting detail and so she, and what she has done is associated the smell of fresh cooking bread with that house so so when she will bake bread she'll meditate on what her vision board is which is what she has written down and recorded mm. so it, it it doesn't necessarily have to be a it, i think vision board it's it, it's just sort of a a, a gene it can be a generic term for anything where you place out in the universe what you're what you're fulfilling and then you tune into that and that's that's why using whatever senses are out there there's a, a deaf gentleman that was talking about he he molds replicas of what he's manifesting in his life mm -hmm. and he he does a, a lot of clay work and stuff like that and he he really brings that about and he finds that sense for him is what works so again knowing i love your statement of knowing your strengths and using your strengths to create your quote unquote vision board or whatever your vision is or whatever you're manifesting once you bring all that together that's when you find this is my way to do it, it and every individual has a way to do it and i think that's what we have to seek is how do we tune into what we want using our strengths that's it. That's exactly what it is, using our strengths. If, if we focus on our strengths, we do two things. First, we 
um, focus on the stuff that is important to us. And second of all, we focus on the stuff that's easiest to attract because we have less vibrational resistance to it just because of our interest in it, just because of how fascinating we find it or how, how enjoyable or, or attracted we are to it. The attraction works both ways. And that, that, is, that is such an exciting, when you look at that concept, that's so exciting because you, you have within you your strengths. And one of the things that, that I always try to find within my strengths, I have, I'm very good, I don't read, and retain very well because of my ADHD. So I, do, I listen to a lot of books on tape. I, uh, I love to go to lectures. I love to hear debates. And I, I retain incredible detail information when I hear something. If I read something, I don't have a lot of retention. So instead of fighting that, instead of saying, I will read it over and over until I have retention, and I will do I just accept my strengths are listening and hearing, and, and ironically, listening and tuning in, and that's what I do for a living, working with people who have sure. addiction. I listen to what they're saying. I, I hear where they're coming from. Yep. So I, I, I use my strength in my business. I use my strength in my law of attraction work, and that's why I love to verbalize what I'm – when I have my vision boards out, I like to describe out loud what they are, and, and when I bring – bring something here's what i have here's what i'm after and as as i talk about it i make it part of reality which eventually makes it it really where i'm at and that that's that that's sort of the key of taking your strengths applying it to the law of attraction and and then you're more in tune when you're doing it from your place of strength like for me the state of gratitude i often i think probably every week i talk i think for most people the most effective state of mind to manifest anything is that from a place of gratitude. Uh, I, I prefer the word appreciation, but I, yes, I like what you're saying because that's, I think, one of the best tools we have for getting through that waiting for Christmas Day period. Just, you know, you, you're, you're frustrated because it isn't showing up, and you know that frustration is creating that resistance. It's like, no, 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 don't go that way. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, it, 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 that that. It's such a clear message from the universe to me is when you quit the resistance, you're going to have it fulfilled. And the resistance, I, I wish it were a switch in my brain that I could, first, first of all, identify it as resistance. And second, then just slip, you know, just click the switch and you're done. But it doesn't work that way for me. I have to understand what is not working here. Why am I not able to bring this about? And, and inevitably, I will find my resistance and also the, the, the not able to place myself in a, a, a state of appreciation, your preferred word, or gratitude, my preferred word. When I'm in that state, that's when I find I'm most vibrationally open to, to no resistance and putting it there. So when I find during the week last week, here's a great example. I had one of those days where nobody would return my call. Mm. I, 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 I'm waiting on this young man to get into a treatment center, and, you know, not getting a treatment center to call you back is almost like, like not getting a realtor to call you back. It, mm, it, yeah. you're, you're like, are you kidding me? And I, I'm, I'm really creating a lot of stress that didn't need to be there. So the, it seemed like the more stress that I was creating, the more pressure I was putting on myself, then, a, then a, another call came in on a situation that I really was supposed to be dealing with, but I was delayed because I was waiting to hear from this treatment center, and, and like four or five things compounded on each other, and I was living in a state, not remotely of appreciation or gratitude, but in a state of frustration. And it, re it reminds that, me also of something that Mike Dooley said. You know who Mike Dooley is from The Secret? Yes. Do you, do, do you subscribe to his notes? Yes, I do. Actually. Oh, they're wonderful. I love them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike uh, gave, you can see a number of Mike's presentations on YouTube, and in one of them, it, it was in uh, the beginning of his promotional tour for his book, Manifesting Change. Uh, in, in the middle of this talk, he says, when, when you're trying to, uh, it, when you're in that waiting period, when, you're, when, you, when you want to make stuff happen, you want, to, you, you want to take some baby steps, even if they're not steps that are going to really do anything, you have to start taking the steps so that the, the universe can you know, guide you and, and say, you know, hey, you're heading the right direction, you're wrong direction, you know, turn here, that kind of thing. But he says, but you also want to make sure that you don't limit yourself to knocking on just one door. 
you want to knock on all the doors. And, and the little metaphor he gives of that is that you don't want to go and, and just start pounding and keep pounding and pounding and pounding on the door and say, open up, I've watched The Secret 25 times in the last 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, and I think that's what we tend to do. And when, when, when I'm vibrating in, in that, that right state, I'm able to, to get that mindset, just like you're talking about, you know, one of our topics a few weeks ago was the law of action. Well, the law of action is exactly that. Go take some baby steps in a direction when you're, when you're stuck, not, not because they're, nece- they're necessary to manifest things. It, it puts the resistance down when we go do that. It forces the resistance down when we go take steps. Now, you can't, as you're saying, you can't just make up your mind. We use that lottery example. If you say, I'm going to win the jackpot of $200 million this week, I'm manifesting that. So I'm going to go cash in all my money and everything I own, and I'm going to go buy lottery tickets so I have enough <laughs> to make sure I win. Yeah. You are guaranteed. I assure you you won't win, not because of, of the, law, the law of attraction doesn't make it possible to win, but what you're actually doing is you're, you're, you're putting it all on only one option for the universe to fulfill that. And the universe is not going to look at it that way. It's going to say, no, no, we're going to fulfill it. But it's going to come in a way that's believable and something that, that is actually plausible in your mind. Yeah, because you'd have to have 100% certainty that you were going to win that lottery. Otherwise, you'd lose it. Right. And, and right. there aren't many of us who hold 100% certainty in our minds for anything more than a split second. And, and, and you've got to hold it there. The, the, one of the ladies that I spoke with, I actually, I actually worked with her as a, a gambling addiction client. I found this one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. She had, she had scratched off a ticket. In, she, this was in South Carolina, and she was in the northern part, the Rock Hill, South Carolina area. She scratched off a ticket and won a hundred thousand oh. dollars. So the lottery office at the time was in Columbia, South Carolina. It probably still is. And as she was driving down to the next day to Columbia. She stopped and got gas at a gas station, bought another scratch-off ticket, and won $25,000. Stopped one more time before the lottery and won a $1,000 scratch-off ticket. (laughs) Now She she was definitely on a pattern there. She started to believe and really was in tune with all that. And And I believe she was manifesting, she was vibrating right. Went and cashed them all in. Well... She eventually became a client. So what happened was her that actually turned. She quit her job thinking, all i got to do now is scratch lottery tickets. Uh-huh. I said, what? Well, it wasn't long before she put back all the money she won and, and, and then ended up with a second mortgage in her house chasing. It went from something she was vibrating and, and in tune with to uh, something she was chasing, which... It, which it is something you recognize very, very well because you had the gambling addiction. Absolutely, and and that and you can see that one of the things that I was always amazed at, and I, I remain amazed all these years later, is when people start gambling early. Compulsive gamblers start their early gambling. They almost everyone wins. It's amazing. It, it, it's it's it, people say it's beginner's luck. It's whatever, but they they win because they really are believing they're going to win. It's really and it and as a gambler, in the end of my gambling wall, I could not win anything. Sure. I couldn't win flip, flipping a coin. I, it, it, I couldn't win. <laughs> That's really sad, but it's true. It really is. It, it, it got to a point where I was so anticipating losing that weird things actually had to happen to make me lose sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that was that. That's how I was manifesting on the wrong side. That's that's part of my belief of the law of attraction because I I was on the wrong side of it for so long in my gambling addiction. I had once had a horse in a race in Miami that was going off at, at 14 to 1 odds, and I, I would have won about, by the time I, I bet a lot of money on it, I probably would have won about eighteen or $19,000. It was in the lead, going around, the, a five-horse lead going around the last turn. There's nothing that could go wrong, and a seagull flew, flew in front of the horse. <laughs> True story. He, he threw the rider. The horse finished first, but it doesn't didn't count because the rider had been thrown off. Right. And I lost the money, and I even realized that was in the beginning. I'm going, 
oh my gosh, I'm so convinced I'm going to lose yeah. that I, <laughs> I brought about a loss from an impossible situation there. It, it, it's interesting that you mentioned that because uh, I like to play online poker. And of course, that's been it's been illegal to play for money in a number of years, although I played for money too and did fairly well at it. But uh, now I just play for the, the, the play chips. And I actually use playing online poker as a way of giving myself a quick read on how I'm feeling. Because wow. it'll show me very quickly, just from the results that I get, how I'm feeling. And, right. and when I get those results, I'll say, oh yeah, that's what that was. Okay, now I understand. That's what, what, what I thought was a neutral feeling is a negative feeling or whatever. It, it's amazing how instant the, the return is on that. Well, with our topic being the, the delay or waiting for Christmas or any, any of that, the, the law of attraction isn't, it, it doesn't have a time clock on it. it. It responds only at the speed you believe it can respond. Right. And that's, that's the key. It's the, it, you can't just do it and expect it because you don't really believe it can happen that way. And, and that's where most people, I think they, they say, I've been doing everything right. Like I said, I've watched The Secret 25 times. I'm doing everything she says exactly word for word. You can't do it that way. It has to come from within. Your words are important because they do bring about a change internally, but it's what you're feeling inside that really matters. That's where that real level uh, that really matches what you're trying to manifest. And it has to come. You have to believe it and literally feel it. You have to smell it. You have to taste it. And it, it's uh, a very hard place to get to for a lot of people because they don't know. It. it I, I love this quote that uh, one of the attendees at a, uh, I don't know if you've ever done, done much study with the Abraham Hicks. Stuff. Oh, yeah. I love Abraham Hicks. I get yeah. their thing every day, too. Yeah, I was listening to one of the live, the recording one of the live thing, and, and this gentleman was saying, I, I, I was tasting the million dollars. I was feeling the million dollars. I, and, and she responded with, and your point of reference of the taste was? Yeah. You know, and you, you, the problem is you're not knowing what that feels like. That, and, and that's a key problem. I mean, because it's a problem I've experienced in my own life and, and that my wife and I have talked about quite a bit, which is how do you visualize something that you have no experience with? Right. Right. And that's, that's, that is where it becomes such a – when people who start from the, the very lowest economic – you know, I've seen people make amazing movements from – the lower economic society, where they're they're you know basically employees at McDonald's or unemployed, and they they've implemented the law of attraction. I'm, I'm aware of 20 people that have pulled themselves out from the bottom to to wealth actually. Wow! But none of them did it instantly. They did it in the increments that they could believe they could do it in. When when they when they were making seven dollars an hour at McDonald's. They did not really believe they could make fifty thousand dollars in a year, but they believed they could make twelve dollars an hour. And once we got them to twelve dollars an hour, then once they accepted, well, you know, twenty dollars an hour written out of, out of hand. That's and then and then once you launch that, I have seen people go up incrementally, but I, I very seldom. I'm trying to remember anybody I work with that's gone up incredibly immediately, drastically. Everything was stepping up, not because the law of attraction needs to step up. Our belief system needs to step up, and that's the big key, just what you're mm -hmm. talking about, yep. understanding it. In fact, uh, to talk about something that I'm actually dealing with right now, um, I have a product I'm trying to develop. I, I, I've actually, I'll, I'll give you a clue about it. I, I've actually figured out how to uh, create an email system that doesn't have spam, which is pretty cool. That is very cool. Now, the problem, of course, is that there's a lot of programming that goes into that. And my own circumstances financially have been pretty meager uh, for quite some time now, so I haven't been able to hire all the, the, you know, the high-powered uh, talent that I would need to hire in order to make this thing happen within a reasonable time frame. So you know, I, I've been able to do some hiring. I'll you know, hire somebody from India at a lower price and so forth and, and do some of that. But some of it I've had to try to face doing myself. And, and my programming skills are mets and mets. If you know a scale of, of zero to ten, mine are maybe a four, 
four plus, you know, so not really great, not terrible, certainly better than most people. But, you know, you, you throw me some challenging programming problems and my head just goes into a tizzy like most people's heads go to, into a tizzy when they see HTML code. Right. So it, it, it's quite the challenge. Here I am faced with the inability to hire because I don't have the money to hire with. I have a project that's at its core level, it's almost done. I have one problem left to solve. One. This problem has been haunting me now for weeks. <laughs> and on top of that, I'm running out of money because I'm spending all my time on doing this thing. So it's a question of, you know, how am I going to pay for the rent and that kind of thing. So it, it's, a, it's not the, the most pleasant situation to be in. And in that circumstance, I have to find a way, and that's is what I've been doing on a regular basis. I have to find a way to get myself into a state of appreciating what I have, appreciating what I've accomplished so far with it, and just believing that if I keep taking the steps, even though I don't understand a lot of what I'm trying to do, if I just keep taking the steps, somehow that answer is going to come to me. Somehow I'm going to get that resolution. And you know what? I, I don't know this for a fact yet, but just before we started recording today, I came up with an idea and tried it, and it led to another idea that I didn't know the answer to, but at least I knew the question. So I put the question out to the, the community of programmers who are involved in this thing. I'm hoping somebody's going to come back and say, oh, yeah, you just do this. And there's going to be my resolution to this thing I've been struggling with literally now for about three and a half months. Wow. And, and getting, as you're knowing, even people, you know, somebody who practices the law of attraction the way you do, the way I do, when you get into these personal situations like this, it's so hard, it's so easy to tell somebody else how to do it. Oh, and yeah. When you're, then when you're doing it, you're like, okay, when, you, when you're looking at it, what you've actually created, when you get in the wrong mindset, I need money to hire somebody to do this last bit, but I'm running out of money. So I need to manifest money, but in reality, what you're putting out to the universe is a lack of money. Right. It, 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 so it, and, and, and the most frustrating thing is recognizing that's the fact that say, okay, how do I turn that around? <laughs> right. and, yeah, and, and that's where it becomes so convoluted and so so difficult to, to bring about is because because you get stuck in that own, you, you know, your own vibrations that you don't want them to be that, but that's just what they are. It's you have a young man that's working on a project different than yours but it's a startup in the same way and he, he he's going through the same thing mm -hmm. and it's just it, it's on the edge of hitting it really big but he's got these things that are slowing him down and and he'll get really excited and then one negative thing will happen or, and then he gets stuck back into the other way of thinking and he's slowly getting through it he will get through but again it's going to happen on the time where at the time that he can process it, and it, the, the time is the problem. Uh, again, not for the not for the law of attraction; it's for us. And right. you will get there, but you've got to keep adjusting your sales, so to speak. What are you really? What at the end of the day, the law of attraction filters through everything. The all the ifs, ands, but should, could, would. The law of attraction hears none of that, and it just goes by what you're feeling. And you, it's interesting that you mention um, almost getting there or, 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 or you know, feeling it perhaps for a second because I actually had that moment last Sunday or, or two weeks ago Sunday, I guess it was. Um, on that particular date, I thought I'd actually solved the problem. I was wrong. I didn't actually have a solution, but I had gotten some feedback that suggested to me I had. And when I, I had that thought that I'd actually solved it, the feeling was immense. It yeah. didn't last real long because I soon found out I was wrong. But for about 25 minutes, I was, I was on the ceiling. I was so excited. <laughs> well, and, and the most amazing thing to me is after, and I guess not amazing, but the most interesting thing to me is that after I realized that my problem really wasn't solved and I came crashing down to earth, I said to myself, how do I get that feeling back? And it, it almost seemed like it was so far out of reach. I mean, five minutes before, I'd had that feeling in spades, and now I couldn't get it back. That was an amazing thing. And, and it was like, wow. It, it shows, first of all, just how much I need to discipline my mind because I clearly could feel it. Certainly, I know how to do it. It's just that I am so conditioned to let outside circumstances 
you know, control what my feeling is going to be that I just allow myself to crash to the bottom and stay there. But wow, that's really what the battle is, or not perhaps the battle is the wrong word. That, that's the challenge. The challenge is to, to learn how to gain control of our own thoughts, our own feelings, so that we can get to that place. So we can start really attracting the stuff at the speed that we really want to attract it. Well, and that's when you become a master at, at dealing with this. And that, that's where you, you, you very much have to learn how to hold on to those moments or, or, or bring them back because they feel so fleeting when you're years of conditioning the other way. Oh, yeah. The conditioning is what does it. It does. And, and so you, but when you have glimpses of that feeling when you're just totally in that, that moment where you're like, oh, my gosh, this is it. It, it's going to, I, I'm there. And you, you feel it and you're saying, I need this so much. I need this so much. And then once you almost overthink it or you bring it about, like I said, then it disappears. Then that, that other mindset is what we've come back to. It just goes right back to the, to the point. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we go back to what we can condition. And that, that's so, uh, it's so frustrating. And I think, again, so, why so many people who eventually give up on trying to use the law of attraction to, in their favor is, is the timing of it all sometimes seems ridiculous or not, not believing that they try it. Well, I tried it for five days and it didn't work, so it obviously doesn't work. Well, you know, in one sense it is ridiculous because we expect the universe to be rational and reasonable. Right. The problem is it's an emotional universe. It's not a rational universe. <laughs> right, right. Well, and, and, you know, you, again, the, the distractions of the universe, you know, w- when you're – when you're sitting there doing what you're doing, you're developing an incredible new program that's going to be very successful. You know that on one day. I know that in my bottom of my heart. I feel it's going to be huge. But what happens is the electric bill comes. Yeah. And you're like, well, they don't care that you're working on this project. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they say you owe $250. Well, then, then the car payment comes. Then the mortgage payment comes. <laughs> and, 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 and you're looking at that going, but I, I, I'm on the edge of this. And, and so, again, the outside influences are at battle with us internally at all times. And, and that is, if, if you want to look at where the biggest delay is, that's normally where it is. Because of, of our reaction to yes. what, we're, what we're experiencing yes. there. And, and that, that's, that's what happens is, is that that reaction that's taking place is uh, – is is the delay because we're back and forth and we're we're I know what I'm feeling but the 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 real world is telling me it's different and in reality it isn't the real world it's my interpretation of the real world but it, it's it's something that you know we 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 live in and out of the law of attraction or at least on on direct in tune within the law of attraction the more you get where that moment last week where you were really feeling it. If you could live fifty percent of your life in that feeling, you would be manifesting all everything. It just, mm-hmm. it, it's for so long. Again, it's handed down from generation to generation. We're asking people to change the way they're thinking in an entirely different avenue. We're, we're we're asking to go down an entirely different street of the way they're thinking, the way their parents thought, and it 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 doesn't feel right sometimes. The cool thing, though, is that. Despite the, the challenges involved, despite the resistance that we have to this idea that we can actually change our thinking, all it takes is a few instances of seeing where we did change our thinking to realize, oh, I really can do this. I'm not sure why I can't do it all the time, but apparently I really can change my mind. I can change my emotion. I can change what I'm feeling. I can change what I'm vibrating. I mean... I'll tell you honestly, Joel, to this day, I'm still not sure what the word vibrating means in this context. They, well, they talk about being on a certain vibration. I say to myself, what vibration? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, and, and I use that word a lot, and I, and I, I don't know if I need another word because I, I'm with you. I view this vib- – I'm, I'm, I call it more tuning. I need to be in tune with. I, I, yeah. I, I yeah. picture a radio where – and again, I know we live in digital ages, so, so – Maybe our younger audience member won't. Well, we're on online radio, so why not? Right. Yeah, it, but but it isn't always ninety two point three. Yeah, it's not the frequencies it, you know, anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, those of us that remember where you had the dial, like especially like on an AM dial, if you wanted to get in there, you had to literally sometimes 
barely move it to the left, and you oh, you had it, and you go barely move it to the right. You had to tune into that frequency exactly. Right. In the age of, of um, analog tuning as opposed to digital tuning, it was all about microfine adjustments of a knob. Exactly. And, 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 you know, and the knob wasn't exactly the most, they didn't put the most money in the car. No, no, no. Part. It was always the cheapest part. <laughs> it was always the cheapest part. So, so instead of vibrating, maybe, maybe the, the, it, I may condition myself to tuning into the frequency of is, to me, much more of a, that's really what it feels, that's my vision. I say vibrating, but I'm really tuning into the frequency of the law of attraction of, of, the, of what, my, what I'm seeking within that. And it is such a tiny, sometimes it's such a tiny frequency difference between the exact opposite that they're side by side. So it, it takes a very fine tuning sometimes. I suspect the whole concept of vibration, well, I know conceptually in our world anyway, the, the concept of vibration comes from Abraham Hicks. We've talked yes. about that before. And uh, w whether or not you buy into the, the Abraham Hicks uh, phenomenon, uh, which is essentially that Esther Hicks channels a, a group of souls from the other side that they collectively call themselves Abraham, um, you know, that, that alone may be enough for people to say, yeah, right, that's too woo-woo for me, forget it. But if you buy into that at all, if you accept any of that at all, I can conceive of the idea of beings on the other side experiencing uh, what other people are going through by seeing them act, seeing their spirits actually vibrate. I can, yes. I, that, that's the only way I can make sense out of that word, because why would she choose that word? That was well, a strange it, it, word to, to pick. Well, yeah, that, that, that's what I think it must be, because from my perspective on this side, I don't see any vibration at all. I just know I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling great. I am feeling good. I am feeling great. I'm somewhere in the middle. That's the closest I can come to what they call vibration. Well, and, and you know, one of the things that I, I watched earlier this week, uh, the movie The Matrix, and they, there's a portion of the movie where, where Neo sees The Matrix not as it's intended, but as just in code. He's seeing it, it's in code. And, and in reality, a lot of people feel, the Abraham Hicks crowd, uh, and, and I've heard others say, that we all put out a vibration. There, there's a positive vibration. There's a negative vibration. There's an attracting vibration. There's, there's all these. And, and it, some people claim it can. I've heard some bioscientists tell me you could one day they'll develop a tool that can measure what vi what we're vibrating. Maybe that could be. And 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 I, I, I again I don't know if all that's true, but but. Well, I, well, it is true to one extent. I, I, excuse me for interrupting. There is one way that they already can measure that. They can hook you up. Uh, they can hook your, your neurology, your brain waves and so forth up to machines, and they can measure those vibratory systems. So there are vibrations of that kind that they can, that they can measure. It's just that we don't necessarily experience that as vibration. Well, and I think, that, I think that's probably what they're picking up on. I, I, and, and if you even want to get maybe even deeper, you know, Abraham Hicks does it, but if you ever read any of the Seth materials, um, the Seth now, that's Pope. really weird material. That's way out there. That's way, way out there. That, that, that's beyond Pluto. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, 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 you know, that, that really gets way out there. Uh, but, but a lot of that stuff, it, you know, I find it interesting that a lot of people arrive at the same place with a lot yeah. of different background. Oh, yeah. And, and I run into, when I've run, when you and I uh, met, uh, actually we never met in person, but we met virtually a couple of years ago, and really had an instant, I felt like I've known you for a long time. Mm -hmm. yep. we, we had a great first talk, and, and since then we've talked several times. I, we, we're from completely different backgrounds. I know of hundreds of people across the United States that I've been in contact with, completely different backgrounds, totally different stories, and we all end up with this same discovery. We all took different routes to get to this discovery. Which is fascinating which I find fascinating into itself. The, the path, there's a million paths to how we got here, but we got here. And that's what reinforces it with me that, you know, I've had people debate, you mentioned the Abraham Hicks thing, say, well, you know, she's channeling people from, and I'm, I, I don't know about all that. I really don't. I do know the stuff that they're talking about is very relevant. Yeah, you don't actually have to believe in, in that part of it. I mean, the information is useful. Who cares what, how she says she's getting it? But I, I quit debating mentally whether she's getting it from some ancient group uh, collective or not. It doesn't matter to me because what she's saying is very much the law of attraction. Right. So I, I, I believe she believes it, and, and that's, that's fine. And, and, but to hear what they're saying is pure law of attraction. So 
I'm on board with that, and I, I, I think that the time frame in between is only dependent on the resistance that exists within our brain and, and where we're at, where we're, for, to, where we're tuning our frequencies, where we're vibrating, no matter what you want to call it, but wherever we're at is the catalyst for the delay and fulfillment. And, and it just it, it goes the other way. It, you know, and often that, that same resistance can have the opposite effect. It could push it further away. Oh, yeah. And it often has. <laughs> but it, it, it has with me many times. And I, I, so I, I think the ongoing battle for each and every human that, that gets into this way of thinking is, is defeating this internal human-made time frame because this is the, the way we believe that the, that has to happen. So it has to happen in a believable sense. And if you do it that way, then it then say like, okay I can I can envision this happening, and I really I've, I've I've seen stories of this happening to other people so I can see that happening to me. Then you can then you almost believe it. But when you don't believe, when you don't know what it feels like to, just like she, Abraham Hicks, like he said, you know, how do you know what a million dollar feel? What, how do you know what it feels like to have it in the bank where you don't have financial worries? What does that feel like? And if you've never had that. You can only guess what that feels like. Right. I know that, that for many years, I, money was sort of the big chase of my life, uh, being a gambler. And I found it interesting when I quit chasing money, I started having money. Um, <laughs> and and by, I'm no means by anyone's definition of rich, but I certainly don't worry about paying bills anymore. And mm -hmm. I have money to pay bills. I have I, I have an abundance in, in, in many areas. And... With that, money isn't such a focus, and I tend to get money much easier than I did when money was my only focus. So, because I, I believe I'm going to have enough, I always have enough. I have, I have plenty. I, I, I find it. I, I don't know how this works. The other day, but I, I got this story that I, every year I help a family just randomly, anonymously. I don't even like to talk about it. But the only reason I'm even telling the story is this family's in need. I, I basically gave them $1,000. Just wrote a check, dropped it off, said, don't, you don't owe me anything, just help, have Merry Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. This was so, I, I don't know, I don't know what it means. It just, I got home and I had bought, I had a car before where I had, uh, I had bought the extended warranty. Right. Well, I trade cars like most people trade, un, change underwear. So I, <laughs> I, you know, I forgot about that. And, well, somewhere along the way, a car ago, they canceled the extended warranty because I sold the car. Okay. I had a check in my mailbox for eleven hundred dollars. Wow. After I dropped the check off, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I just looked up at the universe and I said, "Wow, thanks." <laughs> you know? And, and it, 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 it's such a, to me. I just look at that as a general reinforcer. Yeah, so, oh yeah, a huge so, one I would say. But what I'm going to do tomorrow is I found another family, I'm going to go help them for $1,000. Not because <laughs> I'm seeking more money back, but the point is, it, it, it just, I'm on a different frequency with money now, and, and I'm tuned in with, with money in a different level, so money's not a big concern of mine any longer. And Which is a great place to be. It that is. It's probably the best place you can be. Absolutely. Yeah. We've only got a couple minutes left, and uh, you for the last few weeks, we've, you've been wanting me to remind you of something, and I keep forgetting. But this week, I remembered. So I'm going to remind you. You got a really cool book out there, and we should be telling people how and where they can find that book. Well, thank you, Walt. I, I have uh, first of all, I'd like to thank whoever has been listening. I noticed when we have mentioned the book in the past, I noticed uh, on the analytics of my sales when I get my sales analytics that I noticed a slight bump up after the show airs. So whoever. I believe someone listening has bought my book, and I really appreciate that. The title of my book is called The Bench, and the author is me, Joel Elston. And it chronicles my life over through my gambling addiction, through my discovery of the law of attraction, uh, through the adoption of my children. There's a, there's a whole lot of twists and turns in the book, and it, it really shows what I try to show is how I use the law of attraction and working with my clients and, and how it has such an incredible impact on my life. It's available on Amazon, uh,
Barnes and Noble. You can get it anywhere. Uh, do a quick Google search, but again, Amazon has it. Uh, I would appreciate if you want to look at it. Just, I'd love feedback on it. It's been uh, surprisingly successful, uh, considering I've done very little uh, publicity work on it. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to share it with everyone. And one of the really nice things about the holiday season is to remind ourselves it's not just about giving to others. It's also about giving to ourselves, about feeding our own souls. And one of the best ways we can do that is through reading books like your book, because that's what the book does. It helps feed your soul. It helps you get yourself into that positive place and feel good. Well, I, I, you're, you're so right. And as our audience, I, as we started the show, I want to hope our audience has an incredible uh, holiday season, Christmas, everybody have a Merry Christmas, and next week's show will actually be on New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're, we're getting the holidays this year for our show. That's pretty cool. But, we, but you have a Merry Christmas out. too, Joel. I, I don't know what your plans are, but I hope you have a great holiday. I, I, you as well, Walt. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to spending time with my son, uh, with some dear friends in South Carolina, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Fantastic. Actually, Louise and I are heading up to Vermont to visit some friends, so we're going to have a Vermont Christmas which may actually include snow this year, despite the El Nino effect, so who knows? Well, I sure hope you get it. If you do, how about, how about sending us some pictures? There you go, yeah, I'll just ship it to you. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right, well, we'll see you next week, and we'll see you all next week here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.